All right. Well, hey, everybody. Hello. Good evening. You know what? We're going to be very honest with you. We've been sitting here for about five minutes trying to think of a good excuse on why we're dressed like this, but uh, we just couldn't think of one. Yeah, we, we literally have nothing. It, it'll make sense when we talk about move in and the theme and, and everything. And I'm actually going to take this hat off. Thank you, Hannah and Devin, for letting me borrow that. Uh, I'm going to put the glasses up. I don't know if you can see our, our lightning bolt It's earrings. very good. I took mine off. It hurt. Oh, yeah. It, it does hurt a little bit. Uh, you know, no pain, no gain. That's, That's right. But we are excited, as hopefully you can tell. We are excited um, that you're joining us this evening. We are here to talk about all things Move In 2022. And if you've been with us since the first live event that we did all the way back in November, November. Yeah. where we first talked about the housing application, welcome back. We're so glad that you've stuck all the way here, that you've got a room on campus. And we're yeah, just excited. This, it's almost the end of the journey. We have two weeks, two weeks from today. Move in starts. That's right. And uh, that's, at, I did math. I'm a numbers guy. That's 363 hours, I think. Wow. So that's if, you, if, you take crazy. Out, if you take out sleeping, we got like two days till move in. Very exciting. Yeah. Very, very exciting. So hopefully you've already been seeing some of the things that we've been putting together for you all, the communications, emails, um, and have caught on to the theme of this year's move in, which is uh, life just got brighter. Uh, and Ready, set, glow. Yeah. So we've got a lot of really fun things, which is why we are dressed this way, of course. Yeah. Um, but... Tonight, what we're going to do is talk about all things move-in. So we're going to talk about everything that you need to know to have a really, really smooth move-in experience. Um, parents and families, this is really going to help you support your student during this really fun day. And then students, this is really everything that you need to know to kind of set yourself up for success for this very exciting yeah. day. We forgot something. Uh, this is Catherine Ellsworth. Oh, my gosh, she's yeah. A, <laughs> she's a marketing superstar, uh, and I'm Chris. Yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> yeah. I definitely forgot. I just feel like... They know us. Yeah, I mean, We're friends yeah. at this point, right? Yeah, Catherine gets recognized on campus. <laughs> uh, she signs autographs. I can tell you where her office is if you want to go pay her a visit. Don't, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're a little loopy. We're super excited to be here. We really here, are, though. So yeah. we're going to kick off with talking about move-in dates, which, of course, are very important. So move-in this year is going to be from a Wednesday to a Friday, which is new for us, and we're very excited about that. Um, so we're going to be hosting move-in from August 10th through the 12th, and that's going to be on our Kennesaw campus. So Kennesaw campus is going to be moving in all three days, um, different communities moving in on different days, and check-in times are going to be anywhere from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., and we're going to talk about what those move-in mm -hmm. times look and look like in just a second on our Marietta campus you all will be moving in on August 11th and 12th same times 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit about move-in time move-in arrival times now because those are very important in really beginning this move-in journey for you yeah super excited about it um, we're gonna talk about the move-in arrival times next um, so if you haven't been paying attention starting July 5th students were able to pick the exact day and 30 minute window of time that they can arrive to campus. Um, if you haven't done that yet, uh, please do so. Uh, you were issued a time ticket to go pick your move in day and time. I will tell you that uh, there are only about two to 300 students who haven't picked a time yet. So if you're in that group, definitely encourage you to go out there and pick a 30 minute arrival window. We get questions a lot of time is, uh, does that mean I can only show up in this 30 minute window of time or that's how long I have to unload? Not at all. We just ask for the, the overall experience of move in that people arrive somewhere within that window of time that they select. Because we do have about 6,000 students living on campus coming in over those three days. Um, so the, the arrival times allow us to help stagger things and really provide a, a super great experience. Um, we get asked a lot about how many people can come with you and Although moving is a really exciting time, uh, you're moving away from your family potentially for the first time. You know, aunts, uncles, cousins, grandmas, grandpas, they want to come and, and send you off. We see uh, almost like a family reunion where some families will wear shirts with their students' face on it. It's a, it's a big thing. We want moving to be really fun, but we're trying to ask that uh, people limit it to two to three guests per student. Again, just for the sake of the overall experience because... Um, your rooms aren't that big. Uh, right, <laughs> and our hallways aren't either. <laughs> hallways aren't either, and so we just want to try to maintain traffic flow as much as we can, although it is a super exciting time. Um, and we're going to show a couple more slides here. There's a lot on, on this slide. There's four different screenshots. Um, in the top left, you're going to see a time ticket. And uh, again, there, this only applies to a couple hundred students who haven't picked a time. 
Those have been live since July 5th. That will let you know um, when you can go pick your move and arrival time. I can tell you that I run these twice a day in the morning and the afternoon, so we're caught up with people who need to pick an arrival time. Um, when you go into the housing portal, um, you're gonna, the, right there in that little, what we call a widget, it says move-in selection time ticket, there's a link that says move-in selection process. If you click on that, it will take you directly to the page that you need to go to, and it'll show you um, in that bottom right-hand corner, you'll see a grid. And th this is live, I took this screenshot yesterday. Uh, the green boxes are the available arrival times, and the gray means that one has already been selected. So you're getting here early or you're getting here late. You're getting here, and that, that's for <laughs> University Village Suites. I'm, I'm looking at it here on our screen. Um, almost all the appointments are filled up for that very first day. Um, so again, the earlier you pick the time, the better. If you haven't picked your time yet, unfortunately, you get to choose from whatever we have available, which at this point isn't a lot. Um, but when you see a time and day that fits with your schedule and your families, you just simply click that time. And then in the top right hand corner, it's going to ask you to confirm. Do you want to book this appointment? It is a, a process that takes about 45 seconds. Um, as long as you know the day and time you want and it's available, this process is very, very smooth. Now we do have some students. Um, once you pick an arrival time, you'll see on that page, it'll show you which one you've picked. Uh, and that's a sample there showing you the 30 minute window of time, the start date and time. And if for some reason, uh, some plans change, maybe um, you know your car breaks down or some family can't be there to help you, it's really simple. You click that yellow or gold cancel button. And again, a little window is gonna come up and prompt you, are you sure you wanna cancel this appointment? The cool thing with our system is that you can scroll forward or backwards on the 10th, 11th, and 12th and see what's available before you cancel your appointment. Um, so please review that process in our housing portal. Um, we get asked, what happens if I don't pick a move in time? Unfortunately, you don't get to move in. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. we don't know you're coming. Yeah, we have no idea that you're coming. So we probably gave your room away to someone else. Um, that's not true. Please <laughs> don't, don't freak out. I'm just messing with you. Um, that happens every year. We have some students who maybe don't have internet access or can't pick a move in time or they're just unsure. Um, we just ask that you come during that nine to four window on whatever day works best for you. We're gonna try to squeeze you in. Again, can't promise a really smooth, excellent experience for you, um, but we're gonna do our best. Um, if you want to come in before or after those dates, uh, unfortunately, you can't move in before that, uh, but you can move in after on Saturday, August 13th. It's not something we advertise a lot, but we will have staff available, very limited staff, to help you uh, get checked in, but you're gonna miss all the fun. Um, all the exciting things are happening on the 10th, 11th, and 12th. You're not going to see us wearing these fishnet gloves and, right. and dressed up all goofy-like. So uh, <laughs> definitely try to get here between the 10th and the 12th. Yep. So there are a few things that students need to complete before coming to campus to make sure that really you have the best and most smooth experience. Um, and that begins with your talent card. So if you've already come to orientation, you've already heard this spiel before, but your talent card is very, very important because it is literally how you open the door to your room. So you can't get in your unit without your talent card. So if you haven't already submitted a photo for your talent card because you attended orientation virtually, please make sure that you do that as soon as possible. Um, if you already have your talent card because you came to orientation in person, don't leave it at home. Like, bring it with you. Mm -hmm. And don't pack it away in a box because yeah. oh, you're going to need it. <laughs> please, that, that's a great point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're going to need it to check in. <laughs> has that happened? It has, yeah, yeah. yeah. And when, you have to like rummage through all your stuff. When, when we go over the move-in day overview, we'll explain how important it is to have your that's talent right. card out. So the next thing is creating your six digit lock access pin. So um, on the screen right now, you'll be able to see some screenshots um, on how to create this, this six digit lock access pin. And this pin is really important because it also is how you open your door. So a lot of these are just security measures for you all. So when you um, arrive to your door, you're gonna see a keypad there um, and you will enter that unique pin in before presenting your talent card. And then that is, that is how you're gonna get in. If you arrive to campus and you have not created this lock access pin, your door will like beep and tell you it, it'll go red and you're gonna be jiggling the doorknob. You're gonna be like, my talent card doesn't work. And then you're gonna have to come down and talk to someone and we're gonna tell you that you didn't create your pin. And then you have to, so you see where I'm going with this? Like, it's just gonna take you longer. Yeah. So make sure that you have that pin created before coming to campus um, so that it'll be a much smoother check-in process for you. 
Please make sure that you complete any of the KSU immunization requirements. Those are required, of course, for the university. Um, payment deadline. Mom and dad, I'm talking to you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the payment deadline for the university is August 19th. And that is for the entire university. So you're going to be paying tuition, housing fees, dining fees. Everything is due on August 19th. And everything is done through the bursar's office. So the bursar's office right now has tons of great information on their site about how to complete payments for housing and payment plan information if you are in need of a payment plan. Just make sure that you sign up before any of those deadlines. If you are bringing a car to campus, please make sure that you purchase a parking permit. If you don't have a parking permit, you will receive a citation. So just make sure that you purchase that before coming to campus. Also, our packing list has been live for a while. A long time. Yeah, so hopefully you've already checked out that packing list, started going out to the stores and getting all of the things to make your room beautiful. Um, but on that list, we've got a do bring and a do not bring list. And so make sure that you're reading over that pretty carefully um, because there are some things on there that might seem a little weird that you can't bring, but they're important, like the LED strip lights. Yes. So. Yeah. Please don't bring those. No. Actually, uh, shout out to Alyssa uh, on our Instagram. There was a video posted just yesterday with the a video of do's and don'ts of what yeah. to bring. Um, so make sure you, if you aren't following us on Instagram, go ahead and do so now at Housing KSU. Yeah. Um, something that is optional but highly, highly, highly encouraged is renter's insurance. So we want to make sure that we talk about renter's insurance because we have stories. Um, Horror stories. Bad things, you know? So... This is what happens. Um, a lot of 18 year olds that have never lived alone come to live together in one building. Um, and there are a lot of learning lessons mm -hmm. that happen. Um, and sometimes those learning lessons can cause accidents, um, can cause washing machines to flood and toilets to flood and dishwashers to flood. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We've seen a lot of water related incidents and water damages technology. I'm sure you know that. And so make sure that you protect your things. Um, we know you're bright, but you don't know anything about your upstairs neighbor. Um, and so it's better just to make sure that you do get some runner's insurance to make sure that you are protecting the things that belong to you inside of your unit and we are not liable for them. So once you live here, we're just not liable for things like that. Yeah. And, um, Steve, our executive director is, is very knowledgeable about the insurance world. And he says you want personal property coverage, but also most importantly, liability, at, um, with your renter's insurance in the event that you're found responsible for something. Uh, a couple years ago, we had a student who was charging his vape battery, um, which is not allowed on campus, uh, and it started a fire in his room. Um, sprinklers go off. We ended up displacing about 40 students in that event, um, well over six figures worth of damage, and uh, it was that student's fault. Um, so please consider renter's insurance. Um, hopefully you never need it, but hopefully. if you do, you'll be glad you have it. That's right. And so just make sure that you're making good decisions for yourself. This is a, a time for transition for a lot of you, um, a time of new experiences um, and a lot of learning. And so this is a great opportunity for you. Just make sure that you've got the right coverage for yourself and come in with a lot of peace of mind, um, especially for your parents and families. So yeah. Definitely want to make sure that you complete that pre-arrival checklist. This is already posted on our website and you've started receiving emails about this. So students, make sure that you are checking your student email, your KSU email, because that is where we are sending you all of this information. It will have helpful, helpful links on there. Um, it'll even tell you what items you're missing. So make sure that you are checking that um, often and completing all, all of these items before you come to campus. Yeah. A lot of information coming at you tonight. We're going to take a break in a little bit and answer some of the questions that have been coming in. Um, but we're going to keep plowing through. So on your screen, uh, you're going to see early move in information. I just said that only uh, you know select people are allowed to move in. There are two groups affiliated with the university that we allow to move in early. Um, one of those are the marching owls. Those are students in our marching band. And then we have women that are going through our Panhellenic sorority recruitment process. Um, scan those QR codes if you're one of those two groups uh, because you have your own dedicated move-in page that has all of the details necessary for you because your process is a little bit different. Um, fun fact, we have an email going out tomorrow to these two groups. However, if you were to log in right now and you are a marching owl or uh, in Panhellenic recruitment, you'll be able to see the early move-in pages built just for y'all. Um, so if you want to check and see if you're on the list, we just got those lists on Monday. Um, so we updated everybody's profiles, and you can now go in and pick your official move-in time. If you are an early move-in student, you were advised to go ahead and, and pick a move-in time. 
um, before we got these lists from Marching Owls and our fraternity and sorority life. Um, please cancel your original appointment before you pick one for the Marching Owls or Panhellenic, just so that other students who may need to change their times will have an available time to pick from and you're not holding up to um, appointment times. Uh, so yeah, check out the websites. It's all there. Very, very helpful information. Your movement process is different. Uh, so please pay attention to all those details. And for those of you who are coming at a regular time, August 10, 11, and 12, our move-in guide is live. So if you go right now on our website or you scan the QR code, it'll take you to our website, you'll be able to access the move-in guide. And it, inside the guide, we've got packing tips. We've got a lot of the information that we're going to be covering today, like check-in information, unloading information, um, information about our move-in events, um, and really a lot more things that you'll want, want to make sure that you read. So make sure that you go to our website right now, like I said, and check out the move-in guide. I would read over that very carefully. Take your time. Digest it. Mm -hmm. Print it out if you want to. Um, <laughs> but who prints things anymore? Who owns a printer? Yeah, Not don't. me. I don't. <laughs> but... Definitely make sure that you take time with it. Um, Parents and Families, this is also a great resource for you all to be, to be able to reference um, because it does go over all of this information that we're talking about today um, in, in a lot of detail for you. So oh, Tons of detail, like yeah. I said. So now, everybody take a breath, get out your notepads. We are going to go through the actual move-in process and what it is going to look like. Now, I will tell you if you've had students go to other universities, move-in looks different at every place. I've worked at four different universities. It's been different everywhere. We are extremely proud of the move-in process that we have established here at Kennesaw. Uh, for the parents out there, uh, this is going to be the first time you let your child go solo. Uh, so at move-in, uh, we're going to show you our move-in maps in a second, but at move-in, that's the first thing. Students are the only ones allowed through the actual check-in process. Mm -hmm. And parents will go directly to the unloading zones. But before we get into that, I want to highlight our move-in maps. Um, Tiffany Hartz is uh, manning our, our chat right now. I think she's going to drop the link in to show you these different move-in maps. This is a major enhancement from years past. We used to have a Google Maps that we would share with uh, students and families. Now, this is a custom move-in map based on where you're gonna be living, that is gonna show you exactly where you need to go. If you see one of the icons that has, um, I don't know what to call it, a, uh, like a comment box, click on that because there's information included in that box that will pop up on the side. That's really important stuff to read. And if you zoom in, um, you'll, you'll see all the different icons of where the dumpsters are, where the recycling is, where you can check out a move-in bin, where the information booths are gonna be. Amazing resource this year. Super happy to have this. Uh, and with the different checkpoints, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but you can click a button that says, help me navigate to this place, and it'll open up a Google Maps link for you on your phone, your computer, whatever. We definitely recommend you checking out these maps, especially if you've never been to campus before. Uh, and if you are one of the lucky 490 students that are going to be living in the Summit, our brand new building. That's right. Uh, we've never done this before, so please check out the map and check out the Summit um, Moving Guide. Amazingly helpful resource. Um, so, maps are out there for your, your consumption. Please review them just so you know exactly where you're going. Mm -hmm. But move in. So, on the Kennesaw campus, we're going to focus on that one first. The central parking deck is where every single student checking in is going to drive through the central deck. You're going to be wound up to a, a higher level floor where you're gonna see um, a table that has talent cards. If you have not picked up your talent card yet, um, or you have not submitted your photo, shame on you if you haven't, um, you're gonna be able to pick up your talent card right there and then proceed around to the check-in area where you're gonna get the key to your bedroom door, if you have one. Some communities don't have bedroom keys. Right. But that's where the talent card is so important. Yes, because if you don't have a talent card, you literally cannot get in, like, yeah. at all. Because yes. they are all, um, what, the, what, we, what do we call those? Key, keyless. 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 Key, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> They're all digital digital doors. Shout out to Door Access. Yeah, thanks, Russell uh, and Kelly. Um, <laughs> so if you don't have your talent card, if it's buried away in the trunk of your car underneath all of your stuff, you're, you're going to be putting time out. And we're going to pull you off to the side and make you go fish that out. We won't accept a driver's license. You need a talent card because that is the electronic key to your front door That's and right. your building. Uh, so please make sure you have that. 
Uh, if for some reason you've lost your Talon card, Crystal and the Talon One team are gonna be on site to be able to help you out and help you get a new Talon card um, before you can move into your building. So that, that is the critical piece of moving. Make sure you have your Talon well, card. Hopefully you haven't lost it because it's $25 to replace it. Yes. So yes. don't lose it. First one's on us, second one's on you. Yeah, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, and then um, parents, what you're going to be doing is going to directly to the unloading zones. Um, so we advise uh, families to pack in as few <laughs> as few cars as possible. We really just want two cars per student maximum. Um, please, no U-Hauls. Please, they don't fit anywhere on our campuses, um, and I promise you don't need that much stuff. Uh, you these really are, don't. These are smaller spaces. Yeah, they're cozy. Is what Very I like cozy. to say. Yeah. Um, but please know you hauls. We're going to put you again in timeout for the oversized vehicles. Um, there's clearance <laughs> limits on our parking deck, so please pay attention to all that. Yeah. Um, on the Marietta campus um, on August 11th and 12th, it's a very similar process. All the students will be routed into a very large parking lot where they will sit in their cars in the ACs while our staff is out in the heat. Um, you know, getting sunburned and all that fun stuff. <laughs> the parents, again, are going to go directly to the unloading zones and the students will go through the process. You'll be able to um, reunite once your student gets their key and their moving materials and then go about your day. Yeah. So you'll meet up with your families, students at the unloading zones and the unloading zones are all marked. They're all different for whatever community that you are in. So that's why these moving maps are so important. So you know exactly where your unloading zone is. Um, at the unloading zone, you will have the opportunity to um, check out a moving bin. And so we have these great ginormous bins on wheels um, and you're welcome to put your stuff in them and wheel wheel your stuff into your your room um, we uh, we just kindly ask that you check out one bin per family and you are allowed to have it for one hour um, do they need to, what do you need to check it out like a driver's license we need some sort of collateral yeah yes yeah, so um, your we're, firstborn child I'm just we, yeah <laughs> <laughs> we cannot take money no um, money. We can't take uh, social security cards. We can't take your talent card, but we do need some sort of photo ID. We're going to get your cell phone number two in case yeah. you have it on minute 61. We're going to start calling you and figuring out uh, where you are with our bin. Yeah, so which is why we really, really highly recommend that you bring your own wagon or a dolly. Um, you know, those wagons that they sell now at like sporting goods stores are yeah. super helpful. Um, your student might want to keep it with them, honestly, yes. um, when, when they're loading stuff into their rooms. So a wagon or a dolly is going to be highly encouraged. We also encourage you to, if you can, take out all the packaging before you come here. Please. It will save you so many trips to the dumpster um, and recycle them at your house, right? So unpackage them, whatever you can at your house before bringing it in. Um, after you are done unloading, please move your car um, from our unloading zone to the designated parking space. So that's either going to be some sort of visitor parking for our parents and families, and then students will move it to wherever their like actual parking location is going to be, where they are permitted. Um, so please make sure that you move your vehicle after that to make space for the families that are coming right after you. Now, another thing that's very important to remember is that it is August. Yes. It is hot. I don't know if you've been outside lately, but we are experiencing the hottest, most humid summer I think I've ever it's had. It's very warm, um, and moving is very emotional for a lot of families. So do yourself a favor and come as comfy as possible. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Chris said a lot of families make matching T-shirts, and that's really awesome. Um, but I have seen families, you know, some, some moms try to glam it up, and they come in like wedges um, and high heels, <laughs> and I'm like, ma'am. It is so hot and there's a lot of walking, right? So you're going to do a lot of walking. You're going to do a lot of pushing and lifting. So make sure that you come really comfortable. Um, if you are able to take the stairs as much as possible, we have elevators in our buildings, um, but we also have, you know, 6,000 people coming mm -hmm. and not 6,000 elevators. And so be mindful of those things as well, right? If you've got a small box and you're able to carry it up the stairs, please do that. It'll save you the time of standing in a long line um, and really will just help your process go a lot faster. Um, and because it is so warm, we will of course have water available for you all. Um, so stop by one of our information tents if you have any questions, but we'll also have water and shade available at the information tents. Um, bring your sunscreen, comfy clothes, um, 
and a good attitude, a really good attitude, because like I said, it's emotional, but it's also such an exciting day um, for students and their families, especially if this is like the first one that's going off to college. Um, so it's good to come with those like expectations in mind mm -hmm. as you're coming in. Um, but if you follow our processes, if you follow our maps, um, if you dress comfortably and come with the right attitude, it really is gonna be a really awesome and fun day for your family. Yeah, it, it's almost like our Super Bowl where you get so excited and amped up for move in just to, to welcome all the new students and new owls to their nest. Yeah. Uh, it's a great time, but it's going to be hot. Uh, you're gonna sweat, you might cry. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah. One thing that I do want to mention before we take a few questions, and it's I wrote down a note, is that oh, yeah. <laughs> students need to update their their talent card at a hot spot before coming in. So um, a hot spot is like a little silver box, um, and they're located pretty much outside of every single one of our buildings. And your, your card, your talent card students, needs to be updated at a hot spot every seven days because what it does is it re-encodes access into it. So it really is a safety feature for you because if you lose your talent card and someone were to find it and just try to open whatever door they're not going to be able to because it, the card isn't going to be encoded so when you get to campus before you walk into your building you'll want to present your card at a, at a hot spot your talent card at a hot spot it'll flash green and that will give you the go ahead that your card has been updated and you're ready to go unlock your door and the only thing i'll add to that is the first time you present your card to a hot spot hold it there for longer than you think five to seven seconds, because that first initialization may take a little bit. Yeah. You're gonna see the lights blink, 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 and then green, you're good to go. Yep. So we'll take a few questions now from our off-camera moderators um, before we go on to some other information. Hey guys, thank you guys so much on YouTube and on Facebook for, um, for all of your questions, keep them coming. We will do our best to answer them either in the comments themselves or um, here live, um, but we are only here until eight, so we've only got time for, for so many. So we're gonna start in chronological order, okay? Great. So in the pre-arrival checklist, <clears throat> you guys talked about renter's insurance. So oh, yeah. we wanna hear who do we recommend for renter's insurance? How does that process work? If any information we can talk about with renter's insurance. Sure, we don't have any affiliation with any insurance companies currently, um, but some of the names I hear, uh, Lemonade is a really cost efficient um, insurance provider for college students. Um, a, a lot of times if you are a homeowner or you have a car insurance policy, reach out to them because almost every single insurance company is going to offer like a bundle, a bundle. Yeah. It might end up saving you money in the long run. Um, but I, I have Geico. So I, I rent, I reached out to Geico and I said, I need renter's insurance and they helped me through the process. Mm -hmm. It's really cheap. It was like $12 a month for me. Uh, and, and I would recommend if you have insurance, um, reach out to that provider. Google it, Google college student renter's insurance, lemonade is sure to pop up in that, that first list. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, that's all I got for that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next one is about talent cards. So can you just reiterate what that process looks like for someone who does not yet have their talent card and like what they need to do and where they're gonna be getting their talent card? Yeah, so if you do not already have a talent card, um, you need to submit a photo online um, for your talent card and you'll do so via the like online photo submission site is it can you drop a link to that in the chat yeah great so if not you can visit our website there's like a guide that gives all of the information that you need to know um, uh, before you come to campus it's on the campus services website you can look there um, and so you'll want to make sure that you submit a photo online for it um, and it's a very, very easy process. Once your photo gets approved, they say, yes, good photo, we like it. <laughs> then when you come to campus and you are going to check in for move in, you will need to have a government issued photo ID on you. So a driver's license or a passport, um, if you're driving, your driver's license, obviously. Um, but if you don't have a driver's license and you're coming with your families, then a passport will work or some sort of state ID. It does need to have your photo on it. And when you check in, you'll go through the process where you go and sell, like pick up your talent card. You'll show them your government issued ID. They'll give you your talent card and then you continue the check-in process and that's it. It's pretty simple. Um, so, But that only happens, it's only that easy if you submit your photo before coming to campus. Day, so, days before. Days before, yeah, like not <laughs> the day before. So like do it today. Go find a blank wall and take a photo and do it then. 
before August 3rd. Before oh, August before. 3rd. We have a deadline. That is the deadline. August 3rd is the deadline. So make sure that you submit your photo before August 3rd, and we will have your talent card ready for you. If you do not do it by August 3rd, then you will have to leave the line, go to Talent One, take a photo, get your photo printed, get back in line, and it's just going to extend your check-in process. So don't do that to yourself and submit a photo before coming to campus. Okay, we're gonna take two more questions during this time before we keep it moving. Um, the next question is, if I'm a student and I don't have a car, and my parents are gonna be bringing me to, to move in and then leaving me, what, what route do I follow? Okay, awesome question. Well, we know we have some students that don't have cars. As long as the student is in the vehicle, we will let you into the central deck or the P38 parking lot in Marietta. So again, if it's not the student physically driving themselves, as long as they are a passenger, um, parents is a great time to tell you that if, you, if, if your child is 20 minutes behind you on I-75 and you wanna pick up their key for them, we're not gonna allow that. The student themselves has to be physically present to get that bedroom door key. Um, so if they're a passenger, if they're sitting in the back seat, that's totally fine. We're gonna go to them and get their talent card and then give the key to that student. Yeah. Just follow the student route only. Yes. That was a much simpler way to put it. <laughs> um, there are some questions in the chat right now about the maps. So um, the, the URL to the maps, I for some reason, it's not letting me like copy and paste in the, in the comments. Oh. It's maps.kennesaw.edu. If you go to that website and then you click maps and then you click move in maps, it should pull up all eight of our move-in maps. I, th I think it's still on the screenshot. It's still on the screen. So there, there's like a little tree there. You click maps, move-in maps, and then Kennesaw move-in maps or Marietta. And you'll be able to select your community from yes. that list. Yes. And so last question before we keep it moving. Tell us about the summit. How are we uh, feeling? Oh, the summit. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. I, I was in there on Friday touring with Caleb. Uh, the, fur the furniture's in. They're putting the wall decals up. It is gorgeous. The wall, the graphics on the wall are so beautiful. Caleb sent me a few photos yesterday, I want to say. Like, as soon as they were going up, he was, like, snapping photos of all of them. Yeah. And they look so good. We're putting all the final touches on there. Allie, if you're watching, Juan, if you're watching, Summit's going to be great. They're going to run, run that show down there on the south side. Um, it's our first new building in 10 years. And this team is, like, so excited about it. They have special items just for students who live in the summit. Like I've got them sitting outside of my office right now. They're t-shirts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't love a t-shirt? Right. And they're just for students who live in the summit. So because they are so excited that you're going to be living in this community. So yeah, and I got to tell you, not not there's not a bad view in the building, but particularly if you're on the second, third, fourth, fifth floor, um, depending on which side, it, you're going to have either a view of the softball and baseball stadium and, and Kennesaw Mountain, or you're going to be looking over Arc towards Kennesaw. I mean, it's it's beautiful. It's stunning, really. Yeah, truly. I, we think you're going to love living there, and I feel like there's going to be a lot of sense of camaraderie in that building. You're um, going to be the first. Yeah, and your RAs are really excited about living in that building. So please we're take care of it. Yeah. Yes, please. We please love take it. Take care of it. All right, so before we move on to, we know that you have more questions and we will answer them, but we have some other information that we wanna share with you. Um, so getting your room ready, like I said, check out that packing list. You will want to make sure that you read over that packing list, what to bring, what to leave at home. Um, students, once you are here, um, make sure that you stop by the market or the bookstore for all of your essentials. If you forget something, we probably have it mm -hmm. in either the market or the bookstore. So if you're on the north side of campus, that's going to be KSU Place, University Village, and University Village Suites. There's a market right in that area, um, just outside of University Village 5000 building. Um, and we also have a space in the Student Center where the bookstores are. The bookstore is also located in the Marietta Student Center. So if you need something, we do have room essentials, just in case you forgot something. Yeah, you just never know. You, you really don't, but we've got you covered. Um, so when you get here, this year, we are, we're doing something new and we're really excited about it, and it's our welcome webpage. Mm. So on this welcome webpage, it's gonna be like the everything you need to know guide for once you like check in, you're here, this information is for you. So on this welcome webpage, you're going to find information to payment information, the fix it form in case you need to access it. And we'll talk about that in a second. Um, we're, you're going to have move in events and 
what does an RA do? And so many other things are on this page. Um, Alyssa was working on it today. And she was like, there was so much information. And we just want to make sure that you have one place that you can go to have all of your questions answered. So when you get to campus, you're going to get inside of your key packet, a QR code to this welcome page. Make sure that you visit it that day when you check in, because it's going to be really, really important. You're also going to find inside of your unit a magnet on the back of your unit door, and that will have emergency contact information on it. So if something were to happen to you on campus, who do you reach out to? You're going to reach out to the RA on call, or you're going to reach out to campus police, um, and those numbers are going to be on that back of that magnet, and we've got some other additional resources there for you. So that information will also be there, and of course, your RA. So you're going to meet your RA on move in day. They are very excited. They start RA training next week. On Monday. Yeah. yeah. And so your RAs are getting here early. They are going to be going through extensive training, um, just getting prepped to receive you when you get here. So their whole job is to make sure that you are having a great experience. Um, and so your RAs will reach out to you and make sure that you know how to communicate with them. So make sure that you are looking out for information from your RA when you get here. Yeah, we are, we are more than ready for you all to arrive. Um, and I know this is a lot of information that we're throwing at you. Please go to our housing website. It's got a wealth of information. Um, go back and watch all these videos, particularly this one. Um, but on move-in day, we're gonna have a lot of resources here to help you and your student. We're gonna have information booths. If you, once these maps, you can look at them, you'll be able to see where the information booths are gonna be located. We have them in every community. It's going to be staffed with people who know what's going on. Um, internally, we have a, about a 15-page document that, that we put together for our staff that has every answer to every question that someone might ask at MUBIN. Uh, so please check out the information booths if you have one of those questions. Again, that's also where the water will be in case you get thirsty or need to hydrate. Parent and Family Programs is a great supporter of MoveIn, um, and Sharon and her team are going to be out in various places to help parents. Again, we've said it over and over, it's kind of an emotional day. If this is your first child or your last or your middle to go to college, uh, you, there might be some tears. There might be some emotions that come out, and Sharon is going to be there to love on you and, and send you off in, a, in our Boohoo Woohoo tents. Boohoo Woohoo. That's what we call them. Yeah, <laughs> Boohoo Woohoo. It's like Boohoo, I'm crying, but Woohoo, the kid's gone. Um, you'll get used to it. Uh, <laughs> we are very proud of our wireless internet that we have in our housing areas. It's by a third-party company. We call them Apogee because that's their name. Uh, <laughs> uh, but they, they provide us with incredibly fast, very stable, very secure wireless internet. Um, we have two customer service representatives that work on our campus. They have a 24-7 support line. That'll be on, that's on the, the welcome page as well. It is. In case you have trouble getting connected on move-in day because... That's the first thing I do when I go anywhere is connect to the internet because why not? Got to Instagram it. Got to got to put it on the gram and put it on the Snapchats. <laughs> They're like, who uses Instagram? It's TikTok now. Yeah, sorry. Right. <laughs> you can make all the TikToks you want. Um, uh, Catherine referenced our fix-it form. So again, we have about 6,000 students that live on campus with us. Caleb and our facilities team, they do an amazing job of getting all these rooms ready for you before you get here. But there are times when things are imperfect and we might have missed a light bulb somewhere or a screw is loose. Um, this fix it form is a really quick and easy way for you to let us know that something isn't quite right in your room. Uh, and that will be funneled out to our different facilities coordinators who will dispatch one of our maintenance team members to come right there and fix it. Um, that's only live during move in. That's right. So the fix it form will, will be turned off Saturday afternoon. And then we're going to ask you to put work orders in the housing portal, which we have a how-to guide for on our website. Uh, card services is going to be there to help if you have any issues with your Talon card. Our housing offices are going to be open to help support you. There's just tons of people. We're all going to be wearing specific colored shirts, so you know how to find us, and we'll probably be dressed goofy again. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, we have a lot of volunteers, too. We call them nest builders. You really can't miss. Just, just shout, and someone will be there to help you. Absolutely. Um, and so 
Move-In, again, exciting, exciting times, and we want to celebrate every single night of Move-In. So we will have Move-In events um, every single night, um, and so we're working on, you know, putting together some trivia nights for you all to get to know your neighbors, and then on Friday night, you do not want to miss our Move-In Ready, Set, Glow Bash. That's what the t-shirts are for. That's what the t-shirt is for. If, if you remember when you picked your Move-In time, there were two questions. How many cars are you bringing to campus, and what's your t-shirt size? What's your t-shirt size and so during all three days of moving we're going to have different RAs from the RA street like well we call them the hype squad so the RA hype squad is going to be out during during the days of moving um, and they're going to have some t-shirts out now fortunately we can't have a t-shirt for all 6,000 of you but 2,000 of you that's a third that's a third of you can get a shirt. So if you come and find us, make sure that you are following us on social. Um, come and find us and you could get, you know, a, a really fun t-shirt to wear to the event. We're also gonna have some other really fun giveaways like this These cup, I which I love. Yeah, it, it, we found out that there's different color settings. There's so different th modes on the is, cup. As they're solid colors. That's if, right. If you want just a specific solid color. <laughs> but I really like the one that, uh, that, that rotates. I like that a lot. Um, we've got fanny packs, we've got stickers. We're gonna have Bluetooth speakers. We're gonna have all sorts of stuff um, that we are really, really excited about. So make sure that you are, again, following us on social media. Find us during the days of Move In. Check out our website for all of the information about the Move In Ready, Set, Glow Welcome Bash because it's definitely an event that you are not gonna wanna miss. It's an opportunity to get to meet your neighbors, have fun, and like really kick off a really awesome, wonderful college experience. It's gonna be a great year. That's right. and like. This is how we're celebrating you getting here. Like, yeah. life just got brighter. You know, we're, we're really into our theming yeah. here. If you haven't, <laughs> if you haven't picked that up, <laughs> so we will go ahead and take some questions now um, before we close out. Okay, thank you guys so much. We've got some parents in the in the comments that are saying they're going to be at at the boohoo and the woohoo tents. Good. Woo! They're going to be boohooing and, and they're going to be woohooing. Woo so well, I think you'll you. be woohooing more than boohooing. Yes. No, I think it's it, I think the number of people boohooing might be higher. I oh. think. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Only well, only at first. That that yeah. last hug, you'll be crying and then as you're driving off campus, you're like, "Wait a second. We can go to dinner and not have to pay for somebody else." Yeah. <laughs> That's they're giving much. each other all the all the encouragement in the comments That's talking right. about this new journey their students are going on. It's so cool to see. Um, okay, so next questions we're going to go over. Can we loft our beds? Oh. Ooh, good question. No. no. Unfortunately <laughs> not. Um, it's mostly because of safety. Yes. We want to make sure that, like, you know, one, we don't know how good of a handy person you are. And what if you don't set up your loft, right? Yes. And then yeah. you fall. <laughs> you talk about a safety issue. I don't want to be a, a downer, but there was a, a student at Georgia Tech that was in a lofted bed, fell out of the bed, hit the, the table, and is now paralyzed. And lofting on college campuses is really not a thing anymore. Um, there's a lot of safety guidelines, and we don't provide lofting kits. We don't allow you to loft it just for your own safety. Yeah, so, no. All right, toaster ovens, air fryers, are they allowed? Air fryers, yeah. And toaster ovens that have a closed lid, also yeah. Also yeah. Anything with an exposed coil is what we don't allow. And the way I kind of explain it is, if you're running late to class, you forget that something is on and you were to throw a dish towel over it or throw a piece of paper or something and it catches on fire, that's no. not good. Yes. So anything that can cause a fire. You better hope you have that renter's insurance. That's right, no. <laughs> and all of those items are on our packing list. And I yes. talk, we, we put in there air fryers and things like that are good to bring. Mm -hmm. uh, I love this question. It came on YouTube. Um, they asked, what color shirts are the helpers wearing so that I don't match them? <laughs> uh, That's really good. <laughs> I, well, our shirts say staff on the back. They so do. I, I don't think you're going to match anybody. <laughs> we have uh, black shirts that say staff on the back. We have white shirts that say staff on the back. And our volunteers are going to be wearing gray shirts that say nest builder on the back. So don't wear black, white, or gray. So come in KSU gold. Hey, there you go. <laughs> it's like when I wear red at Target. Oh yeah, yeah. not You're a like, good oh, idea. No, I don't work Or blue here. at Best Buy. <laughs> I'm just here all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, next couple questions are about the summit. Oh, so okay, we great. had some questions about like, where do I park at the summit? So I wanna mm -hmm. answer it both uh, during move-in and, and also and after, after. move-in. Okay, yeah. sure. So during move-in, you will follow, please, please, please follow the move-in map because that is like <laughs> the best way to make sure that you find the right parking location. I believe that is called lot A. A. Yeah. And like 
parking is like, good job. In the yeah. comments. <laughs> You're welcome, Ty. And I, Lee. Yeah, lot A doesn't mean anything to you because you haven't been on our campuses, but it is a, a lot that is directly in front of, um, really, really close to the building. You'll be able to unload there. Um, and then once you are done unloading, you will need to move your vehicle. Um, but make sure that you follow the move-in map. We will also have directional signage mm -hmm. out on move-in day that will help lead you there. And then after move-in day, once you are here, students, students who live in the summit will need to park in the north residential parking deck, which is located on the north side of the campus. Um, and there will be a shuttle that is going to be running from the north side and will um, have a stop at the summit to drop students off there. Yeah, but on move-in weekend, August 10th through the 12th, summit residents will park in the west parking deck. And that is really just to keep you out of the north parking deck because Wild. it's going to be bonkers over there. Yeah. But again, please make sure that you are just following the maps, reading the information on there, because I promise we spelled it all out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, are we allowed to bring monitors and TVs? Oh, 100%. Please bring your monitors, bring your TVs. Um, we get the question often of, can I mount my TV on the wall? And the answer is no, unfortunately, because especially in the summit, it's a brand new building. Um, we know any hole that's there at move out is not, uh, it wasn't there before. Uh, so you can't mount it, but yeah, students bring TVs. Um, I've seen some students on the Marietta campus that have a six monitor set up where they have three on the bottom, three on the top, and it's just like they're in their own little world. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, um, if you're a returning student, we got this question several times. Mm -hmm. Number one, can I keep using my old talent card or do I need a new one? And two, do I need to set a new pin? Great questions. And no, you don't need a new talent card. And no, you mm -hmm. don't need a new pin. Your pin is yours. Mm -hmm. I think if you set a new pin, you might forget it. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just keep your pin the way it is and don't lose your talent card because you can keep using the same one. That's a good question, though. Yeah. All right, we've got some people who are... Um, are wondering if we have any housing left. So can we talk about the wait list and kind of where we're at with that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Allison and Hannah, if you're watching, uh, they are two of the staff members that do our wait list placements. Uh, we have one more round of wait list placements happening. Uh, it either happened today or it's gonna happen tomorrow. And then we're just hitting the pause button on wait list placements until after move in. Uh, so the wait list is moving fairly slow this summer. So our apologies, but we, we are getting our beds from students who cancel their housing for fall. I can promise you uh, that after move-in on August, oh, let me do the math, 13, 14, on See, August 15th, 15th. First, that's day the first, school. first day of class, August 15th by 9 a.m. If you have not shown up to check into housing at Kennesaw State, we are going to cancel your housing assignment and we are gonna give your room to someone on the wait list. Mm -hmm. So if you're still on the wait list, please don't lose hope because every year we have a couple hundred students that will sit on that room all summer long and then they'll never show up and never move in and we, can't, we don't play around. So 9 a.m. first day of classes, if you haven't shown up, haven't told us you're not coming, we cancel your room. Um, so again, yeah, I hate to be the anchor of reality, but August 1st through move in, we're not gonna do any waitlist placements. It's just gonna be on hold. We have a lot of things to do before between then and move in. But then first day of classes, we're gonna pick it right back up. So hopefully that information helps. I mean, the answer is we don't have any beds on campus currently. We're full, but. We're full, but. We, we're, we're, until we're, we're gonna September. have people that no show on us. It happens every single year. And we'll continue placing beds as they become available until like September. Yes, there, there will be some students that move in, realize that they're too homesick and they need to go home and cancel their housing in, in, in September. And so, um, you know, the general piece of advice I give is if you're in a commutable distance, you know, 10 to 15 miles away from campus, just plan on commuting the first week or two of classes and then start aggressively reaching out to us and just saying, hey, my name is Chris, I'm driving every day, gas is expensive, we will do anything in our power to help you out. Okay, um, we got a question that I wanted to make sure we, we asked. Chris, could you just talk a little bit about like what this turn process looks like for parents who are wondering like how the rooms are being prepared, how they're being cleaned for yeah. the fall? Absolutely. So our turn process, that's what we call it, flip, turn, whatever you want to call it. Um, once our students have moved out of the building, we actually contract out these services. So we have three or four professional cleaners that come in. Uh, let me rewind a step. 
um, our own internal maintenance staff, they do what we call a punch. And they go through every single bedroom, they look at every outlet plate, they look at every light bulb, they look at every vent, and they fix all the little things that might have broken during the course of the school year, cabinet door handles, uh, toilet flappers, all those little things. They go through there and they punch the room. Then the room gets professionally painted, if it needs it. Now we, we did walk every single room, all 6,000 beds, to, to grade them on a, on a scale of one to five of this room can go another year without being painted or this room definitely needs to be painted. So not every room gets painted every summer, uh, just full disclosure. And then once the painting process is done, then we sit in our professional cleaning staff, uh, same thing. They go top to bottom, corner to corner and clean the entire place. And then we get to go in and inspect their work. Uh, and that part is really why we're not doing any weightless placements the next two weeks because we go walk every single bed that's being moved into and we say it's ready or it's not, you gotta go back and do this. Uh, it's a really grueling process, uh, but we do it um, for your sake. Like I said, the fix it form, we're going, we're going to make mistakes. Um, that parent Facebook page out there puts us on blast every move in, appreciate y'all. Um, and it, it causes a lot of anxiety for people that haven't moved in yet. Um, but we're human, we make mistakes, we miss rooms. Um, but yeah, that's the process in a nutshell. Yeah. Can we talk about how to get in touch with our roommates if we haven't connected with them yet before moving? Yeah, so you can either reach out to your roommate um, via the housing portal. Um, so on there, they, there is a messaging tool that you can use and reach out to your roommate that way. Um, if they've decided to share their contact information, you will see it inside the housing portal um, and you can reach out to them via their contact information. If they did not share anything, so if they didn't share a cell phone number or a Snapchat or, or whatever it is that you can share on there, um, we cannot give it to you. Just due to privacy, um, we cannot share that information with you. So the only way that you would be able to reach out to them is sending them a message via the housing portal. Mm -hmm. Can I have wallpaper? Oh my goodness, please no. <laughs> <laughs> um, we do have students that put up wallpaper uh, before you put it up on an entire wall, I would test a spot to make sure it's not going to peel the paint. And I will say that after being up on a wall for nine to 10 months, it gets a lot more sticky than you think. Um, so I, I would just be very careful with removable wallpaper because it may not be as removable as you think nine months down the road. Um, and and we, our uh, what's the other favorite thing that we... LED, LED light, light strips. strips. Put, please Jinx. do not put those up. <laughs> Yeah, the reason is you're very careful when you're putting them up, but you're not as careful when you're taking them off. Uh, um, and we've seen just chunks of paint come off. And, and drywall. And drywall, yeah. I mean, it just, it causes a lot of damage, and that will come back to the student. And so, On, on average, it costs us $300 to repair the damage from an LED light strip, and what we do is pass that right back on to the student. Uh, so those little $20 light strips you can buy, they have some sort of super adhesive backing. It's so sticky. Don't, don't, don't use do them. It. Please don't. Please. Please. <laughs> Get a command hook and put up some string lights. If yeah. you want to just have LED lights that are not, like, attached to any yeah, surface, Yeah, just don't stick them fine. to the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Or cable lights, the old rope lights. You put yeah, up like a, little string lights with... A, a command hook, which as long as you take those off properly, they won't damage anything. Um, you can make your room look super fancy and great. Yeah. Just don't damage anything. <laughs> Please. <laughs> All right, the last question uh, that I'm going to ask on the live, and, and we'll still be answering them in the chat, um, is how can I see this after? If I've missed the beginning of this, how do I see it after this event? Yeah, so we will have this posted on our website. Um, so you can go back to our website and view it there. It's also going to just live on the KSU um, Kennesaw State University YouTube page and Facebook page. So you're welcome to see them there as well. Flattered that you want to come and see us again. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know. But it's important information. Yeah, it's very important. So that is going to wrap up everything that we are talking about today related to move in. After today, if you have questions, please make sure that you reach out to the Talon One Service Center. Their information is on the screen right now. They are open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. I mean, you can reach out to them via phone number or email and make sure that you're following us on social media. We are at housing KSU on Facebook and Instagram and we're very excited. Hopefully you can tell by our crazy gear. 
um, that we are just so ready to welcome you to the nest this fall. Can't wait. Yeah. So Can't wait for you to get here. Hootie who? Hootie who? Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, and life just got brighter. Yeah.